I'm the tank you've been waiting for. I am the muscle of the battlefield. I deal over 120 millimeters of explosive punishment. And they have no idea what true pain looks like. It looks like me. My shells are gonna cut right through that armor. I don't need to be fast. I like it when you run. Ha ha ha! Did you bring a pistol to a tank battle? I am a heavy tank, and victory comes only through strength. Hey guys, it's Mr. Beetlebum here again, and thanks for visiting my channel. Today I want to talk to you about heavy tanks. Heavy tanks are basically the vanguard of World of Tanks. They are the tanks that are going to charge in the battle and lead the charge. Uh, all other tanks should be following the heavy tanks lead. Uh, the heavy tanks are basically what they are. They're called heavy for a reason. Why is that? Because they're very, very heavy. They have loads and loads of armor, uh, which makes them heavy. And because they have loads of armor, it also makes them slow. So. You don't see a heavy rushing into battle, you see them slowly going to where they need to be. And as for where they should be, uh, normally at the beginning of a battle your heavies tend to go to a choke point and it's their job to control and hold the choke point so that all the other tanks can get into their spots that they want to flank from or the spots that they want to snipe from. And a good heavy tank player is basically going to keep the other team occupied they're going to distract them they're going to keep poking in and out they're going to get all the focus on me 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 look at me because if that's the case if a good heavy tanker is able to do that then a medium can flank around the side and, and attack them or the TDs can get in some good shots when the other team gets fed up and they poke their heads around the corner to try to shoot that heavy um, another key thing as a heavy what I always try to do is Get the other team to come to me. Come, my little suckers, I say, because if you get them to come towards you, that means they're going to come around the corners. They're going to get fed up because they keep bouncing shots off of you. And they're going to just say, screw this, and they're going to come roaring around the corner and try to attack. And then what happens? All the tanks behind you get to blow the out of these guys. And that's what you want as a team. You want to get them to make the dumb moves. You want to get them to make the mistakes. You want to have patience and common sense, like I've told you in other videos. And you want to make them do the stupid things, like coming around a corner because they're frustrated. Because what's going to happen is they're going to come around the corner and just boom, they're gone. You see it happen all the time. You know, you, you park your heavy there around the corner, you get angled, you got some cover for your lower plate, you got your side sticking out so it's tempting for them to shoot at it, and they'll just sit there and bing, 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 bing shots off your side, they'll track you three or four times, they'll ricochet off your turret or everything, but actually penetrate. And what's gonna happen with a lot of the players out there that are newer, they're just not gonna have the patience. So that's why they end up rushing around the corner and getting killed by a barrage of fire from everything that's behind the heavy. So that's uh, basically the number one thing a heavy should be doing is controlling choke points and basically intimidating the other team and getting them aggravated and frustrated. That's the sign of a good heavy tanker. And then throughout the game, um, if it's a city type game, the tankers, I'm sorry, heavy tankers want to try to stay in the lanes, meaning in the roads that have buildings on both sides. That's where a heavy tank is most effective because you get to use your armor to the full advantage. Uh, just as long as you have someone covering your rear or your side, you're good. Um, you don't want to get out in the open. Uh, I always say, you know, the worst possible thing for a heavy tanker to do is go out into the open. Yes, there are tanks that will do better in the open, but in general, you want to have as much coverage as possible because you are a slower tank and you can't maneuver away, uh, especially when there's Artie, out of uh, bad locations. So, you know, there's plenty of games I'll be in and, you know, there's a, I don't know, a T2KV... Uh, 
150 or a KV2, you know, out in the middle of the field, and you're just looking at them going like, what are you doing? And sure enough, they're gone. Um, you know, the best bet for them is they should have been going in, into the town, or if there is no city on the maps, there's always corridors. And I'm not sure if you've noticed this, but guys, a lot of times on the maps, you'll have your map out here, and you'll have your one flank on this side, one flank on that side, and then your middle. It seems to be, not every map, but almost all the maps, the heavies and the mediums tend to go, the best place for them to go is on the sides, the flanks, and the lights and the TDs are right here in the middle. If you notice that, I, I challenge you, go look at your maps, and next time you play, take a look at your maps, and you're gonna see that both sides are always where you wanna send your mediums and your heavies, whether it be uh, there's crevices or, you know, there's little uh, ridges for the heavies to be behind and rock formations or there's a town and buildings and that tends to happen on the flanks whereas the middle there will be like rolling hills or open areas and that's more for lights and TDs who are going to snipe from a distance of whatever the lights uh, happen to light up for them. Um, again, that's not always the case but most maps it is. So you tend to want to take the flanks you want to go to those choke points, like I said, at the start. And really your game comes down to what happens at that choke point. You want to hope that your team is not lemon rushing uh, and, and just setting everything one way. The, the, the most ideal situation is when you have a good amount on both flanks so that they can hold their areas and their choke points. And as they kill off the tanks because they're showing patience and common sense and waiting for the other team to make the bad moves, then as they kill those tanks, they slowly start moving forward and forward and forward. Okay, so not all heavies are built the same way and, and that would make sense during the war. You know, there was all different types of heavy tanks and, and World of Tanks has been really good at recreating, you know, the reality of what warfare is like. So they have different kind of heavy tanks. Uh, for example, what I mean here is, let's, let's take for example, the American heavies. American heavies, like, uh, what my favorite, favorite, one of my favorite heavy tanks is the T29. Of course, I think everyone loves it. Um, it's known as the hull, the hull, the, 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 the hull down expert. Uh, quite simply, you, you, its lower plate is not that strong. So as long as you get coverage of the lower plate, whether you're using a hill. Uh, with the gun depression or if you actually have rocks or something along the ground or even a dead tank But as long as you're covering that bottom part of your tank uh, That's what's called hull down and so you're just showing uh, The top of your tank well in that situation the t29 and other American heavies just rock uh, You can just And everything's gonna ricochet off them uh, it's gonna be harder to get a pen and they can last a lot longer as long as they keep themselves hauled down uh, whereas, let's say a German heavy or the KV, the Soviet KV line, those tanks are notorious for doing the, uh, the diamond formation. Diamond down the page! Just kidding. Uh, the diamond formation meaning you turn your tank on an angle so that it forms a diamond shape rather than a rectangle shape. Got it? Uh, you're showing your corner to them. And uh, that's because the way the armor uh, plating is set up, that, that gives you the most strength and it gives it the hardest uh, chance of penetration for your enemies. Uh, the KVs, the Soviet tanks, they're as well built that way. Uh, so if you're in a town uh, or even out in the open in a and there's a smaller tank, you know, circling you and trying to kill you, you want to try your best to rotate the tank so that you're always having that diamond situation, that corner effectively pointing at the enemy. Um, but as I said, you know, the KVs are from the Russian line, but whereas the IS line that are Russian, that's different. They're kind of like a, a mixture between a side scraping tank and a brawling tank. You know, they don't have, they're not quite the hold down and they're not quite the, uh, you know, turn your tank on an angle and you're going to be fine kind of thing. Um, either, either way, no matter which tank you play, you want to try to always make it so that you don't show your front and your tracks as much as possible. Uh, tr always do your best to try to hide those guys between, you know, dead tanks in front of you or anything. If you ever are in a position where you can do that, always try to do that. Because almost every tank has the lower plate is going to be weaker. Uh, you always are going to be able to get tracked, so that's why you want to try your best, you know, if possible, to keep your tracks away. 
so that they can't do that to you. Uh, other heavies, other heavies, back to other heavies. Let's see, the Chinese, uh, they have their lower plate. The Japanese basically is just face towards the enemy. Uh, everything sucks, but I would say sucks actually. If you've got a, a same tier tank, you can penetrate everything else. Uh, whereas the front of the uh, tank is, is really a pain in the butt to penetrate, as most players already know. Uh, what about Swedish tanks, for example? They have their Swedish heavy tanks, the Kravang, Kravanong. Um, those are really good in when they use their gun depression, so meaning ridge lines. When they just peek their tops over and they use their gun depression, so all you can see is their turret. Very, very strong frontally. You try to uh, penetrate one of those Swedish uh, heavies frontally when they are using the ridge, and you're just going to get pissed off because all you're going to do is ricochet all day long. Uh, tip, though, is remember, if you can flank them, and with a good heavy that's, you know, pestering them, if you can flank them, then it's fine because the side, the side of the turret, not so strong. Um, by the way, remember, those are actually going to be getting buffed here, guys. Uh, that's one of the tanks that I had worked up to tier 10 uh, recently that I lost. And it's unfortunate because it's kind of a slow process. It's not as bad as the T-57 American Heavy uh, grind. That grind is terrible, in my opinion, just because you, you're with lights and then a couple mediums and then a heavy. And uh, my lord, slow reload of those uh, cartridges. But hey, some people like them, some people don't. Uh, but the Swedish, uh, the Swedish heavy line, uh, not bad. You know, not as fun as other heavies. Uh, but that was a bit of a pain, and those are getting buffed. I might do that again. We'll see. I'm not really sure if I'm going to go that route right away. Uh, but anyways, that's just an idea of you know how different depending on which country you have. Uh, I haven't listed all the heavies, but they all basically have their own, you know, characteristics, so to say. But in general, you want to remember as a heavy that you want to be the one that's up front. There's only a few. I know some of them, people are going to say, well, not all heavies are heavies. You're right. Uh, what comes to mind? Churchill 1, uh, Tiger 1. I'm sure there's probably other ones out there. You guys might be able to put it down in the comments, but there's other ones too that. They don't have the armor. They actually have really light armor for a heavy tank. Uh, but they tend, the ones, the heavies that have the light armor, they tend to have real good guns. They have pretty good accuracy and uh, they're pretty well geared for and set up for doing some sniping uh, or flanking, that kind of thing. Uh, more of a medium tank. So, but in general, guys, remember this is a tip or video for new players. Uh, the guys who are fresh into the game, that's the, you know, so in general, this is what you're going to find with heavies. They're going to be slower, uh, less mobility to move around. They're going to pack a big punch, and they're going to be able to take a lot of damage. They're going to be able to ricochet and, yeah, and not get as many penetrations as other tanks. So you want to be at the front. You want to be pestering the, uh, the opposition. You want to force them into making bad moves, and it's all about... The team behind you it's not all about you your role is a heavy tank don't worry guys you're going to do tons of damage up close but what you really want to do is get the air team to make those bad decisions so the team behind you can just blow the living out of those tanks all right let's go talk about crew skills and whatnot all right so here we go we're in the garage and we're looking at my kv222 uh, nice little tier 5 heavy tank that I've been playing, just starting over again here. You'll notice over here with my crew, uh, they're not even up to 100% yet on their first crew skill. Um, which, for heavies, it's repairs, repairs, and more repairs. Heavies and mediums, guys. Uh, if you're going to be playing these, you want your first skill to be... Other than the commander, of course, who's always you want to put that you want to train up with either camo or repairs, depending on what kind of tank it is. With heavies and mediums, it's going to be repairs. Uh, and then uh, once you get up to 100%, you're going to go down and you're going to reset and you're going to put it at six cents for the commander. Everything else, what you want to do is go for repairs. Uh, the second, uh, actually, you, you could do as well is you could just put it all to brothers in arms and then. Put your brothers in arms second on your commander it really depends on how you want to do it um, but 
what you're looking at for heavies is you got to make sure that you're able to get repairs done quick because the last thing that you want to do is get stuck in the open and waiting for a repair to happen. You want to be able to do your repairs quick and get moving. You've got Artie coming at you. Everybody's coming after you because you're the heavy tank. You're the easy damage for TDs. You're easy damage for SPGs. Uh, you're basically a sitting duck because you travel so slowly. So that being said, uh, as you'll see down here, on my equipment, I have a toolbox. That's not normally what I recommend for um, for your heavies once you get up to like to two or three skills. But that's because right now I don't have my repairs skilled up yet. So to start with, I have toolbox, a gun rammer, and a spall liner. And that's kind of, you know, it's the spall liner is more because I was wanting to do a lot of ramming. I'm looking to get some good shots of me ramming. Uh, that's really the only reason why I do that. Normally I would have, uh, for tanks, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Normally I do the equipment later, but eh, who cares? Let's do it right now. Uh, normally for the heavy tanks, I would do a gun rammer. I would also do, like, say, a stabilizer or vents. Or if you're doing like a mouse or something, you would go for a spall liner because with the mouse, once you get a spall liner, basically the SPGs are just going to be hitting you and half the time they won't even penetrate, penetrate you. Um, but to start with, I would recommend a rammer, vents, really good to have. And then the third one can be your choice. Like I said, at the beginning, make it to a box, but later on, maybe go for the coated optics, uh, go for the stabilizer, and then unless you're really heavy, uh, then go for the spall liner. Okay, so what do we got here? We've got our commander. Uh, of course, for the skills, we start with uh, we start with repairs. We go all the way up to 100% with repairs, and then we go to six cents, guys, for sure for the commander. Then we have our our repairs start again, go up to 100%, and then go to brothers in arms. And then for the third uh, skill, we do our repairs and we just leave it on. We don't get rid of it. And the reason why you do that is, you know, you go up to 100% and you switch to something else. And 100% is, it, you'll notice when you're training something, uh, training a skill, from zero to say about 40 is pretty quick. I mean, it's like, and you're there. Then on the other hand, from about 80 or 70 to 100%, it starts slowing down a little bit. I don't know why it's weird, but that's what I might be wrong actually. Who knows? It just seems to be every time I'm getting up to 80%, 70%, it starts slowing down on me. Eh, maybe that's just me. Uh, but so what's happening here is you basically always have a good amount of repairs between all four or five uh, crew members, depending on which tank you're in. You have a significant amount of repairs going on, so you're going to see a big help once you get hit and and, and shut down for you know something. Um, okay, so moving on, we've got our gunner, and let's see uh, what do we do for him. Same thing, repairs up to 100 percent, and then we're going to go to brother in arms right here, and then once and then put the repairs back on, and once that gets up to 100 percent, then we're going to go down to snapshot improve the accuracy of the during turret rotation very very good uh, then your third one for your driver again you start with repairs you work it up to 100 then you put to brothers in arms you go back to repairs bring it up to 100 and then you got clutch braking I would actually do brothers in arms and then do repairs and then start the clutch braking at, at zero and just let it work its way up uh, I'd want to keep that going uh, then you got yourself your radio operator and the same thing, guys. You're going to start with the repairs. You're going to switch it to Brothers in Arms once it hits 100%. And then go back to repairs. And then, of course, you want situational awareness as your number two. Uh, that's going to extend your view range. Uh, so then once you've got that in, again, you've got repairs going for your third skill. Let that go to 100%. Uh, your loader, if you have a loader. Uh, then again, you start with repairs, go to 100%, do the brothers and arms, go to 100% of repairs again. Um, you can decide if you want to do safe stowage then, or if you want to just keep the repairs and start doing safe stowage. Um, that being said, safe stowage doesn't do anything from 0 to 100. It's only good after 100%, so that's why you might want to just say, okay, I got enough uh, repairs going on with the other 
crew members. So let's take the safe stowage and then start the repairs again as our third perk. That's up to you guys. Uh, that's how I would do it personally on that one. Um, now we've already talked about the uh, equipment down here. Uh, bullets, shells and everything. That's the same. Again, this is a personal thing. You guys are new. I don't want you spending tons and tons of credits going with gold ammo and the large repair kits and the large ammo kits and everything. Uh, or first aid kits, sorry. Uh, I would recommend for the kits, the small repair kit, the small first aid, and the manual fire extinguisher because, quite frankly, they're the cheapest. Uh, and as for your shells, again, just the APs or whatever is your standard rounds, they're always going to be the cheapest. Um, as for your gold ammo in this one, I mean, there you go, 2,400 credits per shell, guys. Um, yes, I do have some in there, but I also have 3 million in credits, so I can blow a little bit, but I still... Even then, I, I used to be up to like 30 million credits and I still didn't load them up. Um, you know, so maybe when playing front lines or something like that, you want to just do as much damage as possible and not even worry about weak spots. Just, you know, try to get as much as you can. Uh, but even then, I found that a little boring and I prefer to, you know, the challenge of just using the regular ammo. Uh, so just go with regular myself. Is that was, That's what I would recommend to you. And then, as for a tank, a heavy, guys, I mean, you know, exterior camouflage, do you want it? Uh, I think it's more about just looking good, to be quite honest. You're such a heavy tank, your silhouette is huge, you're not going to be able to hide behind a tree. Uh, you know, throw on maybe some kind of special, there's the Thanksgiving uh, camouflage. But hey, whatever, you know, if it looks good and you want to have a different look, you know, you can even go into the paint when you're up to tier 10 or the tier uh, 8 premiums, so you can throw custom paint on it. Have one part being pink and one part being blue. Real cool. Actually, it is. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's it. Uh, I've already explained how, you know, what heavy tanks are like, uh, what your main role is, and uh, now going over the, the, the crew skills, you should be set. You know, just when you're going out there, just get to that choke point, do your best, uh, do some research on weak spots, do some research on sky, side scraping, and uh, you should be okay. If there's any questions you have, remember guys, leave comments, leave questions, and I'll answer them for you. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want my videos uh, to, if you want to be notified when they're going up, then hit, you hit the bell and subscribe as well. That always, I've always appreciated that. And uh, thanks again for uh, viewing the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was fun. Cheers.